Welcome back to another edition of NC Sports Weekly News with the main headlines from the world of water sports. Asian sailing events in the limelight as the Singapore hosts the Open Asian Windsurfing Championship. The 2014 season is now full on and NC Sports correspondents are on the beat. First, Lucia Mesbauer meets a German pro offshore sailor, Jörg Rehers, at the boat in Düsseldorf. And then Sebastian Destremont reports with the results and the highlights from the ISAF World Cup in Miami. Plus, Don Abertarelli and Jan Guichard unveil an ambitious racing program for the Spindrift team. NC Sports, plunge into the action. In 36 pro youth and master windsurfers from 16 countries recently met in Singapore for the Sim Open Asia Windsurfing Championship and for a chance to improve their winter preparation on the long course to Rio 2016. With three of the four racing days held in good conditions, averaging 17 knots with gusts of 25, the wind then turned a shifty and variable on day four, reshuffling some positions at the top. This was a true windsurfing festival, bringing together top men and women athletes in the RSX, RS1, Mistral, Formula One and race board classes. The boys' youth division was an all-Hong Kong affair. Kit chan -se built his victory on consistency with five second places and two wins in the nine-race event. Yet Chang Ho kept up the pressure, winning three to close in second place, while Yang Wong Chun took third. In the girls' youth, Fengern Duankamon of Thailand managed to hold the Chi Choi wing, also from Hong Kong. Switching the lead on almost every race, the two young sailors battled it out to the very end. Again, regularity gave the win to Duankamon, who built a 13-point advantage on the pursuers Choi Wing in second and third place Ines Lim Si Ying from Singapore. In the men's RSX, Ek Boonzawad, also from Thailand, had no rivals, winning 9 of the 12 scheduled races, and was chased down by Taipei's Hao Chang and Leonard Ong of Singapore, respectively in 2nd and 3rd. Very similar story in the women's division as the RSX crown was whisked away by Yang Gai Wai from Hong Kong with 7 wins. Compatriot Lam Lo Sing barely held on to the pace to grab 2nd overall, and a distance at Thailand's Asiri Pon Kai Duang Ngam. The results of Fai Chang Kwok, also from Hong Kong, dominated the Mistra class. Chameria Gunawardena from Sri Lanka took the RS1. Holo Ju of Singapore came out on top in the Formula Open, while Paul Leone of the UK was on a hot streak by winning five of the six races in the race boards. Welcome to the office. When referring to high technology, communications becomes extremely important. Let's go back for a few seconds to our report on the TP52s in K-West released last week. When you're called Quantum, you even use the services of your own drone before each race to provide extremely accurate information. Hence, our big surprise when Duke DeVos' team summons us to read a formal statement regarding our comment. So here it is. Hi Sebastian, we would like to clarify the usage of our drone is not used in any way to capture cell trim or any associated information. Your comments are incorrect and misleading. We refrain from further comment. From Florida, the main competitors campaigning for the 2016 games in Rio gather in Biscayne Bay, Miami. On the last day, a moderate breeze and bright sunshine are on the menu dedicated to the medal races. 
With the fourth place, the French Sofian Bouvet, Jeremy Mignon, snatched the victory in 470 men. They put an end to the hegemony of Australian Delcha Ryan, who had a whooping 18 international victory. Ouais, in bah, a row. We are very pleased that to have beaten the Australians and end their 18 event winning streak. It was really important for us, and we will try to do exactly the same on the next one. Delcha Ryan are happy with their silver and the bronze goes to the American McNay Hughes. The other guys, the, the French and the American side extremely well this week um, and we've got a lot of ideas and, and really we're quite happy we've improved uh, a lot throughout the week. A huge triumph for Vickery McIntyre in 470 women. As if it was not enough to win the regatta, the pair also concludes with a victory in the middle race. Le Cointre de France and Viadlo Oga completes the podium. It's a bit of a nerve-wracking race. We came from behind and had a very good start. So we relied a lot on our downwind boat speed, which we've been working on over the last few weeks. And, and luckily it came through for us. With his second place in the middle race, Giles Scott narrowly defeats the week-long leader Oliver Twaddell in the thin class. The bronze goes to George Sarif. I've, I'm going to take a, a hell of a lot away from this regatta and, you know, in the way of lessons. Uh, it's been a very difficult week with very bad uh, bad weather, but, you know, the organisers have done well to get a good regatta at the end of it. In the NACRA 17, a well-deserved victory belongs to Bissero Sikuri after winning the middle race. Sajak Tanja and Saxton Diamond completes the podium while Ikea Martinez Pacheco finish fourth. Rendezvous next week, same time, same place. Until then, goodbye and fair sailing. The boat in Dusseldorf is one of the main events in the global nautical panorama and an absolute must visit for both the top players in the industry and the passionate German public. NC Sports correspondent Lucia Messbauer was on the scene to bring you the inside take and met up with a very special guest. Check out her latest report. Hello NC Sports fans. Welcome to the biggest nautical sports trade fair in the whole world. My name is Lucia Messbauer and I'm here at the board in Düsseldorf. Companies from over 60 countries come here to present their newest products. A lot of top athletes also pass by the fair to get to know the newest innovations and present their stunning projects. I'm here with the shooting star of the high sailing scene with Jörg Richers. I bet not many people at the fair in the moment sail as actively as you do. How many classes do you sail in the moment? At the moment, uh, in 2013, we sailed uh, in three classes. The class Mini, class 40 and class Imoka. And we had one about 280 sailing days last year. How was the response from the German media and the public to all your achievements in the class 40? It uh, was pretty good. So uh, the attention is growing and growing. So we are on the right route um, to become the uh, foremost um, sailing, offshore sailing team in Germany. And the new milestone is coming up, the Barcelona World Race. How are the preparations going? The preparation is um, that we modify the boat at the moment at our base in Lorient. And the boat will go back into the water in, um, in March. And after, after, um, after March is just sailing, we are crossing the Atlantic to go to New York for our first race, which will be um, New York-Barcelona. And afterwards, it's like, Two months of testing, another uh, little refit uh, just prior to Barcelona, and then the Barcelona World Race. So another um, year with a lot of sailing days. Actually, the Barcelona World Race is our uh, rehearsal for the Monday Globe. So it's the um, race around the world. So uh, I will learn how to sail Open 60 in the Southern Ocean. And for sure, our big, big goal is the um, Monday Globe. As for every single-handed sailor, this is the Everest. It's like it's a mixture between the climbing the Mount Everest, um, Olympic Games, and World Championship in one thing. So it's the coolest thing on earth. Cool story, cool project. We are here at the boats, this huge trade fair. You've come here for a long time already. What's so special for you about it? 
I think it's a it's, it's a nice mixture of um, events like behind us with, this, with the kids sailing dinghies, and then there's a lot of information uh, like in the sailing center, and also you have all the, all the big suppliers uh, which are important for for yachting and some nice boats to watch. So I think a day here is a uh, nice weekend. It was a packed season, three boats, three different racing programs, with two podiums and one record to our name, so a wonderful year. The objectives for 2013 were attained, and now with Jan we really have the cards in hand to attack this year, which will be ambitious, and once again with a loaded sports program and some truly important challenges. Following the grand results tallied in 2013 with its three-class mission, sailing's most famous couple Donna Bertarelli and Jan Guichard recently announced their 2014 racing program in Geneva. This year, the Swiss French powerhouse multi-hull team once again promises to be back on the water with a full armada. The D35 Lady Cat will be back here on the lake this summer to take a shot at the Bull Door, while Maxi Trimaran Spindrift 2 is aiming at both the 24-hour sailing speed record and the Atlantic Crossing in crew formation. And finally, we'll also race in the upcoming Route du Rhum in November with Jan going solo. The tallest order will definitely be the New York to Cape Lizard attempt, where the current best time is just 3 days and 15 hours, and was set by Pascal Bidegori and crew sailing at top speeds of almost 33 knots on this very same boat in 2009. A truly ambitious program following the record-breaking feat at the Discovery Route last year when the team chopped off more than 20 hours from the previous record after crossing in 6 days and 14 hours on an average speed of 24.5 knots. With old and new friends supporting their adventure, Donna and Jan also introduced their partners in this ambitious challenge, Bag Mirabeau and Zenith Watches as official timekeeper. Stay tuned to Nautical Channel for the full take on the ISAF World Cup in Miami, only in the upcoming edition of NC Sports Top Story. Plunge into the action with NC Sports.